Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a uh, session for studying diversity and uh, inclusion in Japan's data science uh, landscape. Uh, we'll have two presentations by keynote speakers, and we have three video messages from the president and the former president of JSS, ISM, and IAOS. Uh, let's start. Uh, first speaker is Yuko Araki of uh, Tohoku University, and her talk title is Encounter and Journey with Statistics. Please start, Yuko, please. Thank you. Uh, can I share my slide? Yeah, can you? Uh, if you close your slide. Okay, and... okay. okay thank you. Mm -hmm. you see my? Yes, yes. Okay. Hey. Hey, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm Araki from uh, Tokyo University, Japan. Uh, I will be uh, presenting an overview of my academic and research background, as well as discussing the day in initiatives at Japan universities in approximately for 15 minutes. Uh, I obtained my bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Calgary in Canada. Japan doesn't haven't had a de dedicated department for statistics at that time, which led me to Calgary, where I had the opportunity to study a variety of statistical courses. Furthermore, my involvement in the analysis of real-world data and a consultation, as well as my ongoing research in functional data analysis, greatly helped me appreci appreciate the uh, essence of statistics in solving real-world problems. Subsequently, I passed theoretical aspect of the functional data analysis I used in my master's at Kyushu University, Japan. During this period, I developed a new model in functional data analysis and obtained my degree. Regarding my career, after saving, serving as a postdoc at Kyushu University, I engaged in biostatistical research and education at the Biostatistical Center at Kurim University. Later, I joined the Faculty of Information Science at the Shizuoka University and Tohoku University. Throughout, I have recognized that the significance of statistical science in today's information-driven society and dedicated myself to both research and education. My research focuses on statistical models relevant to functional data analysis, especially those useful for analyzing high-dimensional and spatial-temporal data. I'm particularly interested in analytical method for high-dimensional and multi-layer data. And this page summarizes my research on functional data analysis, which is particularly significant within my research subject. First, we present, we present phenomena as a set of functions, terms as functionalization. Depending on the nature of phenomena, we employ various techniques, uh, techniques like basis functions, base functions or composite base functions or composite base functions and, and the synthetic basis expansion using sparse principal component analysis or Kaufman leave expansion and Bayesian method, adjusting them cre creativity as required. Next, we analyze the set of functions in term or space to make predictions, classification, graphs, and graph structure and infer causality by constructing and applying statistical models like multivariate analysis. The modeling at this stage is closely related to the prior set of functionalization, so some innovate, innovative adaptation might be considered. Finally, as for finally, as for the application to real data, so far I have applied it to phenomena in biostatistics and engineering fields. I plan to explain its application a new domain in the future. So let me briefly introduce an example of research. This was a collaborative study between a former graduate student and all other um, pediatricians. The research aimed to predict the in internal body rhythm in newborns, which remains unknown based on the secretion amount of cortisol a well-understood metric in adults. However, 
the hormone secretion in your bone does not stabilize until about two weeks after birth. And there is significant variation between individual infants, making it a challenge issue to tackle. So we consider uh, three main points. First one, asymptotic distribution of cortisol level and also differs in secretorism due to differences in the magnitude of cortisol level. And second point, so we need to use quantum regression instead of usual uh, mean regression. The second point is that the basis cortisol secretorism is nonlinear. And also, nonlinear function cannot be identified a priori. Therefore, basic expanding method will be useful. Also, this is a hierarchical structure because each individual, each newborn has own, own data. So we use mixed effect model. So we have to consider those three points. So from a quantum regression and basis expansion and mixed effect model, we found out that um, combination of those two we already have um, some previous work, work, but we can't find any uh, research which has um, which has uh, combined three all of three. So we consider non-parameter quantum mixed effect model. However, by pursuing our um, estimation, we found out that the estimation time is so large. So we consider Bayesian non-parameter quantum mixed effect model. This is a Bayesian non-parameter quantum mix effect model. Uh, we call BNQMM in short. And then we have when we have observation, then this is a quantum regression model where phi and psi is a base function. Then we assume a simple galactic distribution. And then so this has um, these um, functions. And also we have those uh, link function and location skill mixture represented of ALD. Kozumi and Kobayashi uh, found out that this parameterization is very useful to estimate parameters. And by using Berry theorem, this is Berry theorem. So we use a um, probability density function and we can write down record function. And we have to think about the distribution of quotient function. So in the framework of Bayesian estimation, regularization can be achieved using a specific distribution a priori. But for Bayesian regularization for p-dimensional parameter vector, a rich regularization assuming a multivariate normal distribution is often performed. However, considered basic expansion method explains by the following equation. And it, it assumes that the independent each other. However, we found that uh, if we consider those the distance of W1, W2, or WP, then it will work very nicely. So for RBF kernel, we have to uh, define the uh, we have to define the covariance metric k. So we use uh, the distance between those um, base distance between um, base function in the um, variance covariance matrix k. Then by using a simulation study, we found out that the uh, proposed model works very well, even though we have the large number of base functions. For previous um, usual uh, setting, when the base function, number of base function is getting bigger, then the estimation is kind of very wiggly, but our, most, our proposed model works very well. So um, by a simulation result, we found out that our uh, founding finding uh, works very well, and oops, okay. So, and finally, we applied our method to a real data analysis. This is called the data for 400 infants, and um, eight measurements per day are repeated for several days. Then we found out that, and because this is quantum regression, we found out that um, the high quantile high quantile level of infants they have um two um two reasons. Usually, adult has only one reason in um, cortical sequence reason, but um, in the uh, infant with have high um, expression of cortisol has bimodal cortisol level. And the amp amplitude of reason tend to increase with cortisol level itself. That's our findings. Okay, and finally, I will show you the activities for diversity promotion. Okay. My activity for diversity promotion. 
I have an experience in Canada of society with diversity, studying Canada University for several years. And uh, when I was studying, the dean of the department was female and professor. So I think it's very natural. I thought it's very natural that female professors are top of some uh, uh, faculty or universities. And active activities in Japan, when I went back to Japan, I was a membership of uh, currently a chair of international relations committee, Jap the Japan Statistical Society, and also member of the special committee of diversity promotion with a professor Watanabe or Minami together. And um, also I did a lecture on statistics and diversity promotion of female high school student, also on statistical analysis for monitoring in the world and Japan. This is with a co-researcher of um, a research foundation of atomic bomb survivors in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And finally, I will introduce you some activities in Tohoku University, Japan. Actually, we have a um, 110th anniversary of birth of female colleagues to stu college student. Uh, in Tohoku University, we have first a female stu university student. So we have celebration. And there is a president of university and the princess Kako, and this is a professor Tanaka. So this uh, presentation uh, presentation is based on the professor Minami Tanaka's presentation slide. Okay, 1907 start of Tokyo University at the third Imperial University of Japan. And powered by university, we have education, research, and collaboration with society. And we have a uh, policy like we have open mind and powered by the uh, university, by diversity, first female university student in Japan. But when at that time, the government or in Japan society said the admission of women to Imperial University is a significant event. This is by, uh, it is called by Minister of Education 1913. And after that, we have many development. So can you see, can you find those three females in these pictures? It's really hard to find because all are males, but here and here and here, you can find three of them, who is the first three a female student in Japan. And also after that 2013 uh, action plan for the in our university, we have work life balance promotion and development of female leaders or development young generation female researchers, develop system science ambassador or a seminar on female research startup career. And also we have many special award system of female researcher, the prize and collaboration with local society and business and action for international affairs or establishing help system of female researchers. So this is the development young researcher special our system female researchers. So we have many prize and we have those ceremony um, of, of cheating. Also, we have just 2022, we have declaration on day. So this is promotion for diversity, equity and inclusion by Tokyo University. Actually what they did is activity hiring female staff, uh, promoting them to senior positions and nurturing young talents in person of gender parity. Also implementing in initiatives to realize diversity and education and conscious biases. Also ensuring an environment where all students and staff can maximize their abilities and strive for inclusive organization where everyone feel welcome, supported and valued. And this is a raising awareness among students. So we have some um, classes to provide students and those class, new classes obtain the present award for excellence in education. And also we have a collaborative, collaborative GI, general, gen, gender innovative initiative between other universities, Ochanomi's University, University of Tokyo and Tokyo University. And this is a uh, last slide. This is a promotion of female students and faculty members. Uh, I don't know how is the world wide um, average, but in 1991, the faculty member, faculty, excluding assistant professor is 1.6%. But now 2023, we have 40.4%. It's a big increase. Maybe all of people from other country can't believe this. we have this very low percentage, but it's getting better. So thank you for uh, listening. This is for Tokyo University. Um, 
activities for the day. And finally, I will just show you one slide. This is my future plans. I like to construct a statistical science research center first in my university to develop advanced statistical model or consulting analytic method in various research fields in main, with many researchers. Because in uh, like maybe in 10 years later, I like to promote an AOA, AI of AI, which realizes a society where everyone thrives through the integration of statistics, computer science, and various research domains and uh, live happily in university or in society. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you, Yuko. Thank you for interesting talk. And I think it's, I'm very impressed uh, with the uh, promotion activities at Tohoku University. And I'm sorry, because of time constraint, we cannot take questions and we forward to the next presentation. And next speaker is uh, Hashimoto, Rikako Hashimoto of the Ministry of International Affairs and Communications. And then her talk title is Career Development as an Administrative Officer in the Field of Official Statistics. Rikako, please start your presentation. Okay. Could you please uh, show your slides? Hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. And um, can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. So oh, thank you for invitation. I'm very pleasure to be here. I'm Rikako Hashimoto from the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications in Japan. And specifically, I work in the Office of Director General for Policy Planning on Statistical Policy. Uh, I've joined the ministry in 2019 and currently working on the operation of Japan's statistical system. I'm sorry, but I cannot see. I cannot see your slides. Oh, so wait, please wait a minute. How about others? Oh, can you see my PowerPoint file? No? Not yet. Oh, please wait a minute. Mm -hmm. It says that the okay yes yes I can okay. see it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yes, um, and I'm now particularly focusing on the utilization of big data and official statistics. So today I'd like to introduce my current job and the diversity situation in my workplace to all the members of CWS. So let me share my work experience up to this point. Uh, since joining the ministry in 2019, I have been involved in various tasks. My first task is related to promotion of evidence-based policy making in the government of Japan. In this job, I was involved with official statistics as fundamental evidence for policy making. I believe this was the starting point for my interest in official statistics. In my next department, I was my work focused on improving the working conditions of ministry staffs and ensuring a balance between work and personal life. During that time, when we were in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I worked on the initiatives such as making our work paperless and conducting online meetings to keep our work running smoothly even in such unusual situations. In the summer of 2021, I was transferred to the department responsible for overseeing Japan's entire statistical system. Here, my responsibilities include managing Japan's statistical law, revising the master plan concerning the department de sorry, development of official stati statistics. And this is specified in the law and implementing various measures outlined in the plan. Currently, my main focus is promoting the use of big data in official statistics. 
Traditional official statistics mainly involve distributing surveys, collecting responses, and aggregating data. However, due to the shortage of statisticians and unexpected events like the pandemic, the traditional methods of data collection have become challenging. To overcome this situation and produce accurate and beneficial statistics, it is essential to utilize data held by various stakeholders, including government ministries, private companies, and research institutions. My division has been encouraging the use of big data so far to improve make statistical production more efficient, reduce the burden on survey respondents and data collectors, and enhance the accuracy of statistics. Various government ministries continue to utilize big data in their areas. So in my department, we are actively promoting policies to encourage them to make more further use of big data. The direction of such policies is already outlined in the master plan. Let's give some specific examples. First, we regularly hold meetings to gather and share information um, about I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, gather and share information about how the data is processed and what considerations are need, needed for its use, especially in the production of official statistics. These meetings include participation from experts in research and private companies, and both government ministries and other stakeholders are welcome to join. By facilitating information sharing in such forums, we believe that more government agencies will be able to use private sector data effectively in official statistics. Additionally, under the framework of these meetings, we have also worked on creating global indicators related to SDGs using observation data. We created two SDG global indicators in the past. Uh, these are indicators 11.3.1 and 15.4.2. We have compiled the verification results regarding these indicators into a report, and we have published it on the meeting website. We are also making the calculated values available on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website. Second, we are conducting research on estimating official statistics using people flow data. This research involves estimating the recent number of Japanese domestic overnight travelers using data purchased from the private companies. And we also and we also use open source map data and the results of the national census. We are succeeding in automating estimation process and the time required for estimation has been significantly reduced. In addition, it has maintained a relatively low deviation rate, allowing us to identify correlations with actual published statistics. However, it's crucial to perform appropriate data processing considering the characteristics of people flow data. Therefore, we are sharing our research findings with various researchers in Japan through academic conferences and workshops where we get input on development of more suitable estimation models and the utilization of research results. This research has been carried out as part of mixed models model project for the utilization of big data. To promote the, promote the use of big data, it is essential to acquire the necessary skills, necessary skills and establish appropriate frameworks. We need to find ways to promote similar research within various government ministries to overcome the challenges. Lastly, I'd like to introduce a big data portal. This portal opened in January 2023 this year. Uh, and it aims to provide comprehensive information on the big use of big data. It currently contains three main sections. The first section provides information on various private sector data, data sources. While there are numerous private sector data sources worldwide, this section focuses on mainstream data sources, 
um, such as uh, mobile positioning data, cashless payment data, and trust quotation data, etc. And you can check overviews of the big data offered by various companies. Users can narrow down their searches using tags like generation date, time, and field. The second section offers, in, offers information on case studies of using big data. The use of big data for problem solving has increased and in various organizations, including private companies, government agencies, and research institutions. This section lists the examples of such data utilization, and you can also filter and search for relevant cases using tags. The third section consists of educational content of, on data utilization. Currently, it includes learning, learning materials related to statistics, uh, which are fundamental for data utilization and guidelines for using data effectively. Although many government agencies in Japan publish similar information, not all of it is available in this portal. We are continually working on enhancing the functionality of the, the big data portal. Unfortunately, it is currently only available in Japan. I hope you that you can take the time to visit the website and consider translating it for your use. That's a review of my current responsibilities. Now I'd like to talk about diversity in my workplace. In fact, Statistics Bureau of Japan and its affiliated institution, the National Statistics Center, have a relatively high proportion of female empl employees. Um, for example, in the department responsible for creating price-related statistics at the Statistics Bureau, approximately 70% of staff members are women. Uh, I think several factors contribute to this. Firstly, the workflow for statistical production is well established, making it makes it easy to foresee how work should progress. Statistical production tasks typically do not require immediate responses, and it is crucial to continue to continue the ongoing tasks consistently. As a result, the workflow is straightforward and highly systematic. It allows female staff members uh, who, can all, who often have limited working hours um, due to childcare and household responsibilities uh, to work comfort comfortably in such an environment. Secondly, for the specific case of department responsible for creating press related statistics, the strong connection between work and daily life plays a role in Japan, creating price-related statistics requires brand name surveys, and this work is flexible and can be done by female staff members working reduced hours due to childcare. Additionally, the knowledge gained from daily shopping for every item can be applied to this work, making it highly flexible. Furthermore, uh, thanks to the current availability of telework environments, even staff members who are taking care of children can participate in surveys and contribute to the planning of service by bringing their insights to the table. Within the Statist Statistics Bureau, there is a robust training system in a place to nurture staff members with diverse backgrounds. In practice, employees who do not have a background in mathematical subjects can receive training and engage in survey work, thus contributing to data utilization. In this sense, irrespective of their gender, their environment supports the acquisition of necessary skills and knowledge. While fields like statistics and other mathematical subjects are still considered to have a low proportion of female empl employees, I believe that it is essential to develop such an environment, cultivate staff members diligently, and establish a work system that effectively leverages the individual working styles of each employee. So this is my end of my presentation. Uh, to conclude, I hope this serves an opportunity for all CWS members to become interested in the working styles of Japanese government officials. If you have any question or would like to know more, please don't hesitate to send an email to my address. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Rikako. I mean, I'm well, thank you for introducing uh, initiatives to expand research possibility to using big data. 
and diversity of statistical bureau of Jap Japan. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, let's go to the next uh, step. It, now we have three video uh, messages from the pre president and the former president of ISS, uh, of JSS and ISM. And the first video message is from Nobuhiko Terui, who is the pre pre current president of Japanese Statistical Society. And his uh, statement title is Empowering Diversity in Statistics and Data Science, a Vision from the Japan Statistical, Statistical Society. Michiko, could you please start the video? Okay. Uh, I am very honored to have this opportunity today. So my name is Nobuhiko Terui. I was appointed as the president of the Japan Statistical Society. Called JSS in this May. In the following, uh, first I will briefly explain overview of JSS and also the current situation of diversity. Then I will introduce the discussion by the special committee of promoting diversity in the JSS. The JSS was founded in April of 1931 as an academic society when the majority of members consisted of economic statisticians and then mathematical statisticians soon joined JSS. Historically, JSS had a strong relation with the official statisticians and the Institute of Statistical Mathematics, ISM. For example, some distinguished members of JSS ISM include Kiyoshi Ito, or Chikio Hayashi, and uh, Hirotsu Akaike. Today, JSS has about 1,500 members. Uh, they are working in mathematical statistics and economic statistics, official statistics, and other various fields of applications. We have been a uh, publishing journal of JSS in English, and now it extends to the Japanese Journal of Statistics and Data Science, called JJSD, published by Springer as the um, International Journal, Statistical Journal, collaborate with other related societies. The Japanese journal is also published to attract not only researchers, but also teachers of statistics at high schools. JSS research series in statistics booklet has also been published by uh, Springer. And it has uh, already uh, 32 volumes up to 2022 year. We hold meetings twice a year, uh, one of which is co-hosted by other academic society related to statistics. And then uh, in September of 2021, uh, forum issues were pointed out. The proportion of women in the membership of the JSS is approximately 9%. There are no women on the board of director for seven years until fiscal year 2021. There are very few women on the committee. All the directors are university teacher, Japanese and male. In April of 2022, uh, Diversity Promotion Special Committee was established. Last time, uh, there was one female director out of 14 posts. Currently, it is increased to two, which is approximately 40% uh, share. On the other hand, uh, there is a trend toward including female members in 
various government related committee particular and various examination committee. So then uh, it causes some problem in some cases requests are concentrated on some email researcher. So they made a problem in their research. So in the uh, committee, the, uh, they discuss, for example, it is important to change the mindset of academic society. Supporting and training female researchers is important, but it is even more important to change the system, culture, and the mindset of organization itself. This committee has been uh, uh, organizing uh, meetings of these uh, three meetings in the uh, Federation Conference and the Spiriting Meeting. And then they discuss uh, program. Some young female uh, faculty member received a large number of requests from ministry and the academic society, especially a young woman who have not yet obtained tenure. Uh, it is difficult for them to refuse this request. Now, uh, towards the future, uh, I am still on the way to understand the situation because my term has started from this May. Uh, but uh, I show you some points here, the followings. We constitute the Japanese Federation of Statistical Science Associations, where the uh, membership is not always overlapped. So I wonder if uh, extending discussions of diversity committee to federation level might be a good way to expand the uh, discussion of the diversity in statistics community. And generally, uh, it takes time to develop human resources and the necessary to con continue activities with a long-term perspective. The percentage of female researchers in Japan is only 20% and even less in STEM fields. So promoting female admission to university and also overall efforts at the national level are essential, including work-life balance for women. So then uh, we keep supporting the activity of diversity promotion special committee. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, the next speaker is Hiroe Tsubaki, the president of uh, Institute of Statistical Mathematics. Okay, I will start the video. Yeah, we cannot hear the sound. Wait a second. Can you, is it okay? No problem. We cannot hear the sound. There is no sound. No, no sounds. Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. Mm. Okay. Second. Still no sound. Okay. How about this? Hello, everybody. Happy IDWSDS. Is it small? I worked for the Statistical Bureau of Japan as a statistician for about 
میده او او Think the sound is not clear. It's the hard. Is it not clear? What is it come? Okay. Mm. Okay. Michiko, could you please start the video from your side? It's playing, but there's no sound. Right. Who is playing? You could hear me. Uh, I will just join. Um, my, I'm here at back. Just join the this meeting uh, after the, our business meeting. So, uh, let me go. Could you start in the beginning? Yeah, so there's a no sound, no poop as of slides now. But this is oh yeah, okay. Can the speaker just speak over the slides? Could you hear me? Still, there's no sound. Uh, 
that's a specialization. Uh, once they will enter university. Maybe so, the, uh, uh, move the kind of orange the dot part. to the right. I am also to be more high school women students that careers in statistics and data science are not only appealing, mm -hmm. but also sectors where we even can truly excel and by a considering kind of content. Yeah, that's right. It's This year, our institute held a symposium to promote gender equity, where we invited Professor Motomi Mori as a keynote speaker. During that time, we also heard about the Second International Day of Women in Statistics and Data Science from Professor Mori. However, it is an unexpected joy that Japan organized a wonderful session today. I'd like to well, I'd like to report the fairly serious situation of the gender equity of uh, mathematical statistical societies in Japan. First, I'll report on the percentage of the female researchers in four college and national research institutes, including an institute and the research organization of information and systems. The National Institute of Informatics holds the highest percentage of female researchers at around 25%, and this figure has been increasing steadily. In contrast, the other three institutes have not experienced such consistent growth. Both the Institute of Statistical Mathematics and the National Institute of Genetics have approximately 50% female representing among researchers. For our audience from outside Japan, this percentage might be striking low, so I'd like to shed light on the broader landscape of female researchers in representation in Japan. According to the fiscal 2022 white paper on gender equity by the Gender Equality Bureau of the Cabinet Office, Japan's percentage of female researchers stands at a very 70.5%, the lowest among OECD countries. This task has been widely reported in Japanese media. Organizing this, the Japanese government has introduced several initiatives that are aimed at boosting the number of female researchers. The chart illustrates the changes in the uh, percentage of the female researchers across various fields over a, a span of five years from 2017 to 2022. We observe that in uh, numerous disciplines, there has been a Marked increases in the intervention of female researchers, even five years. Notably, the field of nursing science has, has been a stand. Impressive increase in, in the number of female researchers. In fact, percentage of female researchers in nursing is now around 80% in Japan. Conversely, this brings our sciences such as physics and mathematics have seen a downward trend in female representation. But clearly, the drop in mathematics is what makes an alarming pointing towards a rapid decline in female participation. In fact, representation of female researchers in mathematics is less than 10% in 2022. By the Statistical Bureau of Japan, the Institute of Statistical Mathematics, and the Japan Statistical Association. The table shows the number of male and female winners over the past five years are categorized in the high school and college divisions. Remarkably, why all the winners in the college categories have been made? Almost all of the high school winners have been female. I'm afraid these talented young women don't build 
data science or statistics as a field conducted in an optimist and often pursued as a specialization uh, once they will enter university. So I'd like to conclude the statistical community. Japan's need to intensify efforts to reform high school women students that careers in statistics and data science are not only appealing, but also sectors where women can truly excel and make consistent contributions. It's critical that we work towards impeding the whole of women in statistics and data science engaged in Japan. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay. Michiko, could you please uh, show the third video for us? Hello, everybody. Happy IDWSDS. Is My it name okay? is Kawasaki. Yeah, Let it's okay. Let me introduce myself. I worked for the Statistical Bureau of Japan as a statistician for about 35 years. And then after that, I've been engaged in education and research in statistics at the university for about 10 years until now. In my career, I made efforts to support career development of female uh, statisticians, sometimes successful, other times not so successful. Based on my experiences, I would like to talk about the current status of Japan from the viewpoint of gender gap and discuss future prospects. First, we have to face the unfortunate fact that the Japanese society still has a relatively large gender gap. According to the Gender Gap Index published by the World Economic Forum, Japan is positioned in the 100 the 25th place out of 145 countries. This means we have a long way to close the gap and make a lot of efforts from now. But ranking is sometimes misleading. So let's look at the sub indices, uh, the composition of the gender gap index. Here we see the conditions of females in education and health. Uh, is not too bad. In fact, Japanese women have the longest life expectancy in the world. Also, Japanese female university participation rate is as high as men, or in some years, female rate is higher. The problem lies in participation of in economic and political activities. Percentage of Japanese women having higher positions in workplace is lower than many other countries. Also, percentage of Japanese politicians in the parliament and high-level officers in public administration is still very low. This is the overall condition of Japan. Now, what about the statistical society? I give you this question as a quiz. But in fact, Professor Terui already gave the answer. The answer is 9%. This is a very disappointing figure. I don't have the figures for statistical societies in other countries, but they are probably much higher. So this is the current status of Japan. But I think we shouldn't be discouraged too much. When uh, the Nobel Prize winners were announced recently, I was very happy to find two female winners. So I became curious and checked the statistics of Nobel Prize winners since its foundation in 1901. The figure is surprisingly low. The total is 6.4%. The highest cat category is Peace Prize, 16.4%, followed by 
literature price with 14.3%. And the lowest two are physics 1.8%, economics 2.2%. Statistics and data science are relatively close to these categories rather than peace and literature. From these figures, it seems that all over the world, female scholars and researchers in science and technology have some kind of difficulties in making top level achievements or being recognized for their achievements at the top prizes. This is by no means a consolation for the situation in Japan, but I think there is something to learn here. There seems to be a kind of stereotype that science and technology is perceived as a subject for men, while literature is for women. To achieve a better gender balance, we have to get away with such stereotype views. So let's compare the current situation between Japan and other countries. This chart shows the uh, uh, female share among the STEM field graduates in the tertiary uh, education. STEM here, uh, as you know, represents science, technology, education, sorry, engineering and mathematics. Michiko, could you please stop the video? Japan's percentage is far lower than other countries, and we have to... I'm very sorry that because of time constraint, we have to stop the session here now. And I, I'd like to find some way to uh, ac uh, to access the video for people who are interested in. Uh, so please send me email if you you want to access the video. And uh, I'd like to thank all attendants and the speakers because uh, we often encounter the difficulty to promote diversity in Japan's a Japanese Statistical Society. But a uh, presentation by two not not the speakers give us a hope of a uh, sense of hope. Thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, this concludes this session. Thank you very much. Uh, Michiko, if you can share those videos with us, we will definitely put it on our YouTube channel. Okay, so that okay, people yeah. can still see these because okay. it's very important. <clears throat> Thank you for